I was expecting you. Welcome back everybody for this third episode of Plans for Work and Plans for Beginners. For those of you who just joined it for the first time on this channel, my name is Margot and welcome among us, lovely, geeky, plenty people. Today I'm gonna touch on both ficus, uh, which is ficus lirata and ficus elastica. The reason why I'm joining these two together is because they are from the same family and they require more or less the same kind of care, the same kind of light, the same kind of watering. They can handle pretty much the same conditions, although they are from very different parts of the world. Here we go. So both of these trees come from the Moraceae family, which gathers over 1,400 species of plant gathered under 40 genera. One common point between all these species, including those two trees around here, is the presence of milky sap in the stem, otherwise known as latex which is highly toxic for animal, may I add. So you might want to keep these trees um, either far away from your pets or keep a little bit of an eye on your pets uh, if you bring these trees inside for the first time. Mind you, I have a cat and these plants are two of the first ones that I ever brought back in my home and I never had any problem. I think animals kind of figure out on their own what to mess out with and what they shouldn't touch just be aware that these two plants are highly toxic for animals. I'm going to start off with the ficus lirata. A little bit of a fun fact about this, uh, I got this tree originally after watching one of Summer Rain Oak's video because she has a massive one that is about 11 years old I think and it's just massive and it was just there taking over all her workspace and I thought oh my god I want that to happen in my house. So I got one that is nowhere near the size of her ficus. Uh, we all agree on that, but it's kind of a fast-ish grower. Whenever springs arrive, it just takes off and then it goes dormant for most of fall slash winter. But once it takes off, it takes off. I mean, um, it's been shooting out leaves from everywhere since beginning of March. So Ficus lirata, or otherwise known as Fiddly Fig Tree, is actually named after its leaves, which look a little bit like lyres or fiddles, which are some, you know, kinds of violins and stuff, which is why this plant is so good as an ornamental uh, tree. I think the shape of the leaves are nothing like you, you're ever gonna see in another tree. I even have this little growing point here that I'm really proud of. Uh, I find it so cute. You might notice every now and then some red spots here. Might be the result of inconsistent watering, which would add up because during the winter, I don't really water this plant at all uh, because it's dormant and it, I don't wanna have root rots because it, as long as the plant is not really growing, it doesn't need water. So I kind of give it water once a month or to be fair with you, I water it in winter whenever I remember to water it. I kind of try to forget about it because I know it can survive on its own uh, during the winter month. It might also be a spider mite problem, which would add up as well because I've had spider mites problems uh, around my house during this winter. It actually took down all my Kilithia, but more on that on another video. So the Ficus lirata is actually from Africa, but not desert like uh, Africa, more like the rainforest and tropical region of uh, from Cameroon to the Sierra Leone. It can grow up to 15 meter tall. I'm pretty sure it can go beyond that given the right circumstances, but I think uh, as a domestic tree that's pretty much as far as it can go and that's already a lot. Um, what I love about this tree is that it grows up like a stick. If you want, to, if you want it to branch out, you really need to uh, cut it near a node and then uh, some branches will pop out of it because otherwise it's just gonna stay like this and keep on growing as a, um, as a straight up stick. I really like it because when you grow this tree indoor, it actually reaches the roof and then when it reaches the roof, it bends over and make a little arch. And then I think it's so, so poetic and so romantic. I really want this to, to happen to this tree actually because my goal is that it, it touches the roof and then start to do this little nice arc and then I really want to put this guy over a couch or something and it makes a little forest coming all around of the of the couch and I think it's so romantic, it's so poetic and so cozy and 
everything everything in the bin hole. I love this tree. I actually use this tree as a growing season meter. Whenever it's the end of fall and winter is kicking, uh, he just stops. To the point that I've had I've had this tree for two years and every time it tricked me. In the winter I'm almost certain that it is dead, that the new uh, growing point is actually dead and it will um, and it's bone dried and it it's gonna die on me but whenever middle of March hits and I start to have nice sunrise northeast spring light it just uh, starts growing again and that's when I know that it's time to put some uh, flowers outside and that I should expect some new growth from everyone else in my house and I really like it. In terms of hardiness, uh, this guy can handle a uh, very high temperature obviously because of where it's from. It can handle temperatures uh, as low as 10 degrees Celsius. This is definitely not uh, a tree that I would try to put on your garden because it will most probably not survive a European winter but if you are planning to keep it in indoors in your uh, living room in your office in your bedroom it will grow very well for you I keep mine next to the window northeast ish uh, window in the winter it still gets a little bit of light as soon as spring starts because the days are getting longer and the Sun hits in a different angle it gets some direct sunlight from the morning but just for one hour or two maximum and then it gets to uh, bright indirect light I cannot emphasize this enough this tree is not a southwest window tree. If you give it too much direct sunlight, uh, yes, it is from Africa, but remember it is from the rainforest slash tropical part of Africa. So it is not made to handle full on sun for many hours. It might be a fig tree, it might be from Africa, but don't let this fool you. This guy loves bright, very bright indirect sunlight and it can handle a couple of hours of morning sunlight but not more I wouldn't try more if you try to put it in the south uh, facing window what's gonna happen is that you're gonna get crispy leaves you know worst comes to worst it's just gonna burn all your leaves down and you're just gonna end up with a stick because it is native from um, the low part of rainforest it will handle very low light circumstances uh, again you still need to have a, a window nearby because I can say that enough times in this series, I'm probably gonna repeat that a lot. No plant needs no light. But if you are in an office with tiny windows and you're just looking for a nice ornamental tree to put there, uh, this tree is gonna be perfect for you. Note that there is also a variegated version of the Fidelific tree. I don't own it myself, so you're gonna have to Google it. I find it equally beautiful. I just don't have it because I never found it in a shop. And I have to say that even if I found it now, I would probably not buy it because I'm really happy with this little guy. And I've been hunting down for more philodendrons because everybody knows here I'm a philodendron person, which means I'm gonna need a lot of space very soon. But I will keep you updated on that. That will be a subject for another video. One other thing that I wanna add that makes this tree super cool is the size of the leaves. I mean, <laughs> shall we do a head test? Shall we? Shall we do a head test? A Kaylee Ellen head test? All right. Moving on. Let me present to you the Ficus elastica. It is in the same family as the Fidelific tree. Although it is not from Africa, it is actually from south slash southeast of Asia. Indonesia, east of China, all this jazz. So it likes it hot and tropical. But if you don't have hot and humid, it will be fine too, which is why it is in this series to begin with. It is actually the first big tree-ish that I brought back. I have actually three of them in one pot and I've had it for two-ish years. We've had a love and hate relationship for a little while because um, it was growing very well and pushing out a lot of beautiful, uh, very, very dark, very dark green leaves with this red vein in the middle and then I don't know if it was spider mites or overwatering but uh, one day this guy decided to to push out droppy droopy leaves uh, and he was not happy and I'm not really sure what happened there I think it was a mixture of everything it was probably because I had put my big yucca in front of it and it wasn't getting as much light as it used to before 
um, or maybe it was a combo with spidermite and maybe overwatering. I'm still not really sure to this date what the problem was. Uh, but my conclusion is that this tree doesn't like changes. So if you get it, you put it in the place that you think will be good for it, which is uh, very much like my ficus lirata. I put it next to my northeast facing window. Uh, from winter to summer all the time and he just loves it. I used to have it in my living room uh, Which is more southwest, but it was pulled way back from the window actually So I'm not really sure if it actually Wasn't enough light for him. But anyway, he was just not happy there anymore So I decided to put it there uh, Last winter just to try it and ever since we fixed all of the problems So I'm still not really sure what happened. But anyway, um, it was happy and putting out, this is a normal leaf uh, with the dark green and the red middle vein. Um, and you might notice that something starts to go wrong when the leaves are troopy. See this one actually, it's not really hardy like this one. They're, they're supposed to be very hardy, rigid leaves. And this one is all droopy and it will stay that way forever, but it's okay, I don't mind. Um, the other sign that there was a problem is that the middle vein started to, to become green as well. Um, which might be a spider mite problem. Maybe it was sucking out too much energy from the tree for it to just keep up with all the coloring and the hardiness of the leaves and everything. Uh, and then at some point, it even started to push out uh, the tiniest leaves ever. Like, I changed the position. I put it in my northeast facing window. And ever since, um, I also treated it for spider mites. I gave it a very good shower and then I put it here and then I let it live its life. Uh, I barely watered it through the winter, same as my ficus lirata. I just let both of them go dormant for the winter. And I just um, casually um, put some water in it whenever I remember that I actually have these trees around. Uh, but ever since we fixed the problem, because see, all the new leaves start to be rigid again with this lovely red vein. And they are actually uh, getting bigger and bigger every time. So I think we fixed the problem here. But same as the Ficus lirata, because it is native uh, from rainforests in Asia. It will handle um, low light. I don't know if it will handle uh, direct light that, that good. I don't think so, because it's a tropical plant. It's not a desertic plant. Again, you need to, if you have a lot of uh, light, I'm guessing that you need to provide with more humidity, because otherwise, these leaves are going to start burning out because they're not made to, to be sitting down in the sun. They're more of like jungle creepers or climbers. It's a perfect office plant though. Fun fact, in its native place in India, people try to train the roots of these trees because uh, they are actually super, super hardy to make natural bridges. I think that's, I think that's awesome. Um, I'm pretty sure it takes a while though, don't get me wrong, but I would love to see that in real life. I think this is super cool. Same as the ficus lirata, they are highly deadly for animals, but I have two of them. I have this ficus, I have many other plants that are supposed to be toxic for animals. Uh, my cat never touched it, it sometimes does that. I don't know if your cat ever does that to annoy you, but mine just does this. To wake me up but she never bit in it she never scratched it to the point where she started to leak it and you know that, that we had to go to the emergency so it's just a little bit of a warning uh, i wouldn't say don't buy it if you have a pet just again if you bring it inside of your house for the first time and your cat uh, especially cats i think uh, if your cat is very curious and tends to bite stuff i would just keep an eye on it or buy um, a repulsive uh, formula that you can just spray all over your plant. That's actually what I do as well when I bring a highly toxic plant in my house. Uh, just, you know, to, to make that double safety net. It's kind of a double safety net kind of thing. You can buy them in the market or you can just do it with, I think, uh, lemon and water. I'm pretty sure it will work. Uh, it's actually the lemony smell that cats don't like that much. So you just spray your plant with whatever it is that you can use as a repulsive for, for your cat. Uh, you just let it sit like that for a week and your cat will basically be trained not to play with this, with this plant. Uh, I know it worked for mine. Moving on to the variegated version of this plant. 
otherwise known as um, Ficus elastica teneki. Uh, I know there is supposed to be the teneki um, variegated rubber tree, which is supposed to just put out creamy leaves. Sorry, creamy leaves like this. And there is a, um, a variant of it called uh, Ficus Elastica Variegata Ruby, which is supposed to put out very, um, very bright pink slash red uh, leaves that then turn into a more creamy color. Uh, although I have to say that I think mine is a plain tenicky one, but um, it's not that obvious with this uh, leaf because it is already um, growing a little bit old but you can see that there's definitely pink and blushing on the new leaf uh, so I am pretty sure that um, that the pink or the blush of the new leaves is uh, sun stress induced because I am leaving this sitting in my south facing window and I make sure that it gets a lot of light and just for the sake of the experiment I put it there also just so it has the maximum of direct sunlight as it can and my experiment so far has uh, proven me that even the regular Teneki one if you leave it in the sun and it gets enough sun stress you will have blushy ready uh, reddish leaves I think it is very very cool I actually think that the um, variegated version of the ficus elastica is cooler than the variegated ficus throughout but that's just my personal opinion same as the brother over here it has a red middle vein and then um, some shades of greens that kind of look like they were painted over and overall this is a very cool uh, tree it has it requires exactly the same thing as this guy over here it will handle low light perfectly fine mind you that the more light it gets the more likely you are to have um, this creamy white thing on the leaf if you get direct sunlight you will also get a blushy pink before it turns creamy white so that's just the same as this tree really but just a little bit upgraded so if you're just looking for something a little bit more Okay. The variegated version of both of these trees might actually be your jam. None of these were very expensive. Again, I got them at uh, one of Paris' uh, big plant sale. Uh, one day I'm gonna vlog about this because I keep on mentioning this place so many so often that I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm gonna start to try and vlog in there whenever it is, you know, safer to go in this kind of public crowded spaces. So yeah, if we're talking about price. Um, this guy was like was 15 euros it was uh, three trees for one basically uh, mind you it was a little bit smaller but it was still a very good size uh, same for this guy over here i think it was either 15 or 20 euros and this guy over here was five euros because it's actually just a little baby cutting um, this one is a little bit more of a slow grower since i've had it i think it has pushed out four leaves um, that's not much, but you know, um, I don't, I don't really mind. He lives on his own little timeline, and I'm just here to provide. Really, he is like all of our plants, doing the best that he can under the circumstances that we give them. So yeah. So that is it for my little ficus family. I hope you were happy to meet them. I sure as hell was very happy to introduce them to you. And yeah, I hope to see you next time. Bye bye.